you're on a ship and it's drowning. Mm. There's a mm. child dying. Mm. How can you possibly like even begin to, to read into the estimation of all of this and, and the qadr of this, right? So you can't come to terms with qada if you don't trust the qadr. Always know that it is possible for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to change you or to change a situation. Our responsibility, our responsibility is, is to know him and to trust him and to love him. Sometimes you'll find people have, mashallah, uh, great degrees in Islamic studies, mm -hmm. but in a moment of calamity, when the, qadr, the iman of al-qadr is very weak, mm -hmm. uh, that knowledge becomes nothing. Mm -hmm. But you have an average person who has no education, no Islamic education whatsoever, but their iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm -hmm. gives them that meaning to everything they see. And, and, and I, I love to use the expression, subhanAllah, they see beauty in the middle of chaos. This is that beauty, that beauty in the middle of that, that chaos. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh everyone. Welcome back to Quran 30 for 30. The question from yesterday's juz, what are two other names of Surah Al-Isra? So please do answer below bit in the ta'ala. A reminder, of course, to donate to Yaqeen, inshallah, if you haven't already. We're mid-month now, so you should have by now, but inshallah ta'ala, hopefully you still will. And of course, to download the ebook and follow along, inshallah ta'ala. We're joined, of course, by Sheikh Abdullah Duro and Sheikh Yasir Brijas. Hayakallah, yeah, Sheikh Yasir, Kevin Hal. Alhamdulillah. Welcome Alhamdulillah. in Dallas, Sheikh. Allah Allah Allah. 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 Feels like home, mashallah. Feels like home. <laughs> don't, don't get too comfortable, right, Sheikh. <laughs> I'm sorry, you kicked me, you locked me out of the other space. <laughs> I hope you know that all 10 parking spots in front of Yaqeen belong to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, wonder I was, no wonder I was looking for an empty spot, basically. I parked my truck across all ten, you know, so, so. As a matter of fact, I saw your truck, I saw your truck even parked all the way, it's been taking the driveway, even actually, yes, the, 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 the sidewalk, yeah, even. Yeah, Why you gotta help me like that, Sheikh? We're in Texas, Sheikh. We gotta just nah. pick up trucks, man. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. You know, you're welcome to, um, you're welcome to park at the McDonald's next door. Make sure that you, you know, boycott them on the way in. No, to, to use their parking spot, we'll no. have to ask the official uh, BDS Fatwa Committee. No, no. But, uh, <laughs> Sheikh, Sheikh a role, man. <laughs> but Sheikh Yasser is different, man. It's different. Yeah. Right? I, I heard, y'all heard this special salam, which has Sheikh Abdullah, mashallah. With Sheikh Yasser, mashallah. No, no, Sheikh, that's all good, mashallah. No, no, I'm going to show you some we, love. We all love Sheikh Yasser. As always. You're, you're, mentor, you're just being jealous, bro. Yeah, I am, I am. <laughs> yeah. He lives in Capel, you know. <laughs> You actually you live in Valley Ranch. And she just I do. Just pretend to live in Capel. <laughs> pretend to live in Capel. Yeah. Yeah, you're a foreign imam to them, as it right? I'll let the community know that, inshallah. Yeah, Capel should. community. Come over, <laughs> come over to Valley Ranch more often, inshallah. No, I'm love this. Hey, it's good to have you. Love you. Love it. Always good to have you, Sheikh. Always, <laughs> always, always good to have you. Inshallah, Taala. With that, we will go ahead and get started. But now, Alhamdulillah, Alaihi Wasallam, wa wa So. Today's juz actually, subhanAllah, is one of the greatest lessons in Qadr. So I was looking forward to this actually, you know, when I initially started mapping out my notes for Quran 30 for 30 this year, because it matches perfectly with the series. And I think all of us will be talking about Qadr, inshallah, in some manifestation, as we did last juz as well. If you go to verse 21 of Surah Maryam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَالَ كَذَٰلِكِ قَالَ رَبُّكِ هُوَ عَلَيَّ هَيِّنَ وَلِنَجْعَلَهُ آيَةٍ لِلنَّاسِ وَرَحْمَةٍ مِنَّا وَكَانَ أَمْرًا مَقْضِيًّا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in reply to Maryam alayhi salam that it was said to her, so it will be. When Maryam asks, how can I have a son and I have not been touched? How is it possible that I will be giving birth to this boy? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that it is easy for me. And there is no easier easier with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's all the same to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kun fayakun. Allah says, be and it is. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and we will make him a sign for humanity and a mercy from us, rahmatan minna, so a special mercy from us. But then Allah says, وَكَانَ أَمْرًا maqliya. It is a matter already decreed. Now, there's a difference here between qadr and qada. Many of the ulama mentioned that the difference between al-qadr wal qada, qadr is the estimation of all things. It is the calculation of all things. Qada is when it comes into its existence on this earth, when it actually manifests itself. So qada is the judgment, the execution of the planning of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the calculation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that which is held from our understanding, held from our vision. And qada is when it actually comes to form 
in this world. So the interesting thing here is that when Jibreel alayhi salam says to Maryam alayhi salam, kana amran maqdiya, it's almost as if he's saying, as many of the ulama mentioned, you're already pregnant. Like you're you're arguing here and saying, how can I have a son when I've never been touched? And how can I, how can this be? As if she's protesting, like what's what's gonna happen here? Kana amran maqdiya, this has come into existence the baby is already meant to be born, subhanAllah. So it is already decreed for you. So qada is a step further than qadr, as many of the scholars mention. But I want to also point out something else. When you go before Maryam, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to us, Zakariya, calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, asking Allah for a son. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course, responds to Zakariya and says, Inna nubashiruka bi ghulamin ismuhu Yahya. We've already named him for you. By the way, you're asking for a son. He's already been named. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the way that he is going to be. Lam lahu min qablu samiyya, that he's the first one to be named this way. And Allah mentions of his qualities in verse 13. Wa hanana min ladunna wa zakatan wa kana taqiyya. That he's going to have a special type of hanan from us, a special type of compassion from us and a special type of purity from us. And he's going to be from the God-fearing. And he is kind to his parents, he will be obedient to his parents, and he will neither be arrogant nor disobedient. Now, subhanAllah, it's really beautiful here because you see the beautiful qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah says he's already named. And look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sawarahu wa qaddara lahu, as the ulama mentioned. Allah has proportioned him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed for him that he's going to have these special qualities already embedded in him. And if you remember in the Ramadan series, we talk about the hadith of Al Ashaj who comes to the Prophet and he asks the Prophet, Al Hilm al Ana, these two qualities that Allah loves. Was I born with them or did Allah put them inside of me? And we said that Allah puts these things inside of you, but then you have to nurture them. You have to nurture them, right? And, and bring them to the next level. So imagine. Yahya comes out with a name and he comes out with these qualities that are meant to give fruit first to his parents and of course to the world as well. And you have to also see the correlation, a lack of having Hanan and Zakah, a lack of having that compassion and that purity would have led to him being Jabbar and Shaqiyah, right? Would have led to the opposite qualities of being arrogant and disobedient. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him a special type of purity, a special type of cult uh, of compassion. And then Yahya alayhi salam cultivated those traits in the most beautiful of ways to their blessed ends. And so the Qadr of Allah brought Isa and Yahya to this world miraculously, but it also shaped them miraculously. And we continue to benefit from the efforts and from the impact of that until today. And of course, that is also a sign of the answer of the dua of Zakaria, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not incapable and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not stingy with his sincere servant that when you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with husn al with a good expectation of him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala far outdid anything that Zakaria expected of him when Zakaria Islam called upon him he gave him a son and gave him the most beautiful qualities may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to also make beautiful dua mm-hmm. and to have beautiful qadr come as a result of that mm-hmm. which only comes as a result of beautiful tawakkul Allahumma ameen when speaking about the position of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our lives, his ability, his qudra as well, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's able to do all things. And he literally proves that in every life, in, in all the Prophet's lives, alayhim wa salam, may Allah have his peace and blessings upon them. It's important for us to remember that Allah ala kulli shay'in qadir, that He is able to do all things. I want to share with you one example of that in the chapter of Taha, chapter number 20, verse 14 through roughly 18, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Him choosing Musa alayhi salam. Musa alayhi salam receiving the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when He chose Him to be a prophet. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَنَ أَخْتَرْتُكَ فَاسْتَمِعْ لِمَا يُوحَى I myself chosen you, therefore give, give ear to what is revealed. Innani ana Allahu la ilaha illa ana fa'budni wa aqima salata li dhikri. Verily I am Allah, there is no God besides me, so serve me and establish the prayers to remember me. A small point here is very, very important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose him. The first thing that he told him to do is to remember him and to establish the prayer. 
we see the second pillar of Islam is the prayer. After knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah acknowledged who he was, told him who he was. Musa understood that. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him the first thing to do is to establish the prayer. And this is important for us as Muslims when we try our best to come back to Allah. Know that part of that equation is to continue or start with praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the best of your ability. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, In nasa'ata atiyatun akad ukhfiha litujza kullu nafsin bima tas'a. The hour of resurrection is coming. I have will to keep the time of its coming hidden so that everyone may be recompensed in accordance to this effort. Allah is telling them something about the future, that the, the sa'a is close to show the importance of the matter. I chose you for something, start to pray because you don't know when the time on this earth will end. There is a sa'a, atiyatun akadu ukhfiha, that it is coming. And this is important for us to know that we don't know when we will leave this earth, individually or collectively. We do not know what are we doing in this life. Looking at the ayat and the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then asking ourselves, how <clears throat> am I using the ayat which is in front of me in a way that pleases the creator of the ayah, of the ayat, the signs, and I myself am one of those signs. How am I using it in a way that pleases my Lord? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues, and then he says, Let him who does not believe in it in the sa'ah, in the hour, and follows his lust, not turn you thought away from it, lest you are ruined. Do not let those that don't believe in what you hold dearly in regards to your connection with the creator of the heavens and the earth, don't let them turn you away from that. Don't let them, family, friends, whoever it may be, it's important to know that Allah is the utmost important element in our lives and he is someone that we should always turn to and try our best to live up to the sharia, the, the system that he has created for us. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks the question, وَمَا تِلْكَ بِيَمِينِكَ يَا مُوسَى Musa had a staff with him. Allah SWT asked him, not out of ignorance, but to prepare all of us for a lesson. What is in your right hand? Moses explains, he says, this is my staff. I lean on it when I walk and with it, I beat down leaves for my flock to hit the trees down, leaves down from the trees. And I use it to yeah, to direct them a certain direction. Uh, and I have many other uses for it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, Alqiha ya Musa. Throw the, throw the staff. So he threw it down and it turned into a rapid moving snake. Something that we would never expect. Musa didn't expect it. Allah ala kulli shay'in qadir. Allah is able to do all things. Never give up on the ability of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our lives for things that happen externally and also what happens internally. This is why we say things such as, Oh, the one that makes the hearts firm, make my heart firm on your religion. Always know that it is possible for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to change you or to change a situation. Our responsibility, our responsibility is, is to know him and to trust him and to love him. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues on to say, then he said, seize it, have no fear, we shall restore it to its former state. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him, and place in your hand, in your armpit, uh, it will come forth as a shining white without any blemish. This is another sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah shows him two signs here. The staff that turns into a snake and then his arms that is illuminating. And then Allah concludes here, to where we will show you some of our greatest signs. Brothers and sisters, remember this month of Ramadan is a time for you to be better. And it's a time for you to reminisce over those signs from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The community member you haven't seen for a long time and you've apologized or they've apologized to you. Those intimate nights that you've had with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, signs that it is possible for you to be better. And know that Ramadan is a catalyst for that. With this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared him by showing him his signs, proving himself to him, and he tells him, إِذْهَبَ إِلَى فِرْعَوْنِ إِنَّهُ طَغَى Go and face the world. Go and face Fir'aun, the one that has transgressed the bounds. In our lives, when we see these signs of Allah, use these signs to be obedient to him and know that it's always possible so you can face this world in a way that is pleasing to Allah <clears throat> subhanahu wa ta'ala. It can change your heart and change the hearts of others. Barakallahu feekum.
الله يسلمك شيخ ياسر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا ثم ما بعد سأك الله خير شيخ عبد الله شيخ عمر for this beautiful introduction to the جزء uh, number 16 of the Quran uh, what I want to share is really the, the um, starts from the end of جزء 15 and the beginning of جزء 16 which is uh, the story of موسى عليه السلام and الخضر in terms of Al-Qadr, in terms of how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared Musa alayhi salam to meet uh, and face the world and Fir'aun, Allah azza wa jal is bringing to us really the, the, um, the concept of knowledge and the concept of Qadr of Allah azza wa jal. Here is Musa alayhi salam standing before Bani Israel and he is there, um, uh, of course, speaking to, to the people with a, with a divine connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's ultimate knowledge because Allah speaks to him directly. And uh, one of Bani Israel asked him, is there anyone who knows more than you, ya Musa? To which Musa immediately he said, I don't think so. Because he had a divine connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He didn't think that anyone would, uh, uh, would have a, a better maybe access to that knowledge. To which he confidently he says, he says, I don't think so. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immediately gave the news to Musa alayhi salam, who told you so? Go to such and such place, you will meet a man. Go and learn from him. Musa humbled himself and goes to this, to this man and he meets with him. There he asked Musa, Musa alayhi salam, ask him a simple question. Can I follow you and teach me something that I would like to have guidance from you? Al-Khudr immediately answered Musa alayhi salam, You can't handle this knowledge. How are you going to handle such a knowledge if you don't know exactly what's the context of it, where it's coming from? Musa alayhi salam, he says, Don't worry, I'll be patient with you. I just want to follow you. So he told him, he says, if you're going to do so, قَالَ فَلَا تُسْأَلْنِي عَنْ شَيْءٍ حَتَّى أُحْدِثَ لَكَ مِنْهُ ذِكْرًا Don't ask me a question until I'll give you the news and I'll tell you exactly why this happened for. Now, the concept of all this now, part of the story is all of us as human beings, we love to know so we always feel safe and secure. If I know what's happening tomorrow, it makes me feel safe and secure. If I know that I'm gonna have uh, food tomorrow, if I know that I'm gonna, inshallah, that'll be safe, if I know that my house is gonna be okay, my job is gonna be secure. If I don't have that knowledge, it will always keep me safe and keep me secure. But Qadrullah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the secret, is the sir. If you know everything, you will never need God subhanahu wa ta'ala anymore because you're already safe and secure. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept that element of the future, understanding the Qadr secret and hidden, so that you always need him. And you always need, for, need him for guidance, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. Just like uh, uh, Shaykh Abdullah mentioned about the story of Musa alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala equipped Musa with ultimate knowledge, changing the laws of what he knew to be different. Musa alayhi salam, he had the staff in his hand for ages. And he never thought it's going to change to something such as being a big snake. His arm is always the same thing, the same color. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is now changing the, ro the rule of nature for him. So Musa alayhi salam, now he has an ultimate level of knowledge. Now that is power that will keep him strong to stand before someone such as Fir'aun. Imagine if you have the knowledge that, that would connect you straight to the divine subhanahu wa ta'ala, nothing will shake you. This is exactly the same concept that we need to have as we go through our difficulties and hardships in our life, such as what's happening in the world today, uh, what happens also in the situation for in Gaza as well. People wonder about this issue. But if you have the knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-alim, al-hakim, if he says something to be, it will be. We know that everything happens and there is wisdom behind it. We might know it, we might not know, know what it is, or might not know it. But with our belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that kind of qadr and yaqeen and certainty put us at ease. The story of Musa alayhi salam continues right now in Juz 16, obviously as well too. So Musa alayhi salam goes with the khadr on three incidents. The incidents of the boat, and then the boy, and then of course the village that they went to. Went, went to. As for the example of the, of, of the boat, they went for a free ride, and halfway through that journey, Al-Khudr, he takes advantage of the absence of the, uh, the owners, and he makes a hole in that boat, to which Musa a.s. was surprised and shocked. Why would you do this for? But Al-Khudr had knowledge of the future that Musa did not know about. Then comes the story of the boy in which uh, the end of life, the life of this boy was on the hand of Al-Khadr. Um, obviously the parents uh, don't know what exactly happened there, but Allah has his own taqdeer as well. And Musa, he saw a crime, but he didn't know the context of it. And then came the story also of the village when they did not uh, give them hospitality. Al-Khadr still insisted on fixing that wall for them, to which Musa was very upset. So when he complained, Al-Khadr told him the story. He said, look, now I can tell you what exactly these things are all for. 
The three examples tie into the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and everything in our life ties into one of these examples. Number one, the example of the boat, they didn't know there was a tyrant taking all these boats and a serpent them stealing them from them. That hole saved that boat for them. So basically what happens is sometimes we focus on the, on the, on the hole in the boat. We don't know that the khayr that's gonna come beyond that because that same hole was the reason why their boat was saved. The child as well too, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may give it that, that the parents, they remain patient simply because they have iman and faith. They might not even know why this child was taken away from them, but they know for sure that Allah subhanahu has wisdom behind it and they remain patient and they moved on with their life. As for the example of that wall, they, uh, uh, Musa didn't know that behind this wall, underneath the wall, there was actually a treasure for two orphan kids and boys. And Al-Khadr, he had the responsibility to save that wall without even taking credit for it. So our job in our life is not always to question the why, as long as you trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just do it, mm. just do it. We always have the desire to have that knowledge, but sometimes it might not be beneficial to us to focus on this as much as knowing that in the moment, all what I need to do is this, so I'll do it and trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the consequences and the results. Wallahu a'lam. Barakallahu feek, Subhanallah, it's interesting because the whole is the qada, <laughs> yep. right? Mm. Uh, it's, you can't read the qadar based upon how overwhelming the qaba is, right? So you're so overwhelmed by the appearance of things and it's so mm. dramatic, right? You're on a ship and it's drowning. Mm. There's a mm. child dying. Mm. How can you possibly like even begin to, to read into the estimation of all of this and, and the qadr of this, right? So you can't come to terms with qaba if you don't trust the qadr, which is no. of course the rulah fi khalqi, right? The, the secret of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But that, that requires of course uh, uh, a great amount of meaning not necessarily knowledge, a great amount of meaning. Yeah, and basically, what does that mean? Sometimes you'll find people have, mashallah, uh, great degrees in Islamic studies, mm -hmm. but in a moment of calamity, when the, qadr, the iman of al-qadr is very weak, mm -hmm. uh, that knowledge becomes nothing. Mm -hmm. But you have an average person who has no education, no Islamic education whatsoever, but their iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm -hmm. gives them that meaning to everything they see, and, and, and I, I love to use the expression, subhanAllah, they see beauty in the middle of chaos. They see that beauty, that beauty in the middle of that, that chaos. The parents that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about in the story of Al-Khadr and Musa, he says, The reason why these parents, they moved on, they did not uh, uh, stay, you know, uh, kind of holding themselves hostage to that moment of loss and grief. Uh, it's because they knew that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a plan for them. That strength of Iman made them move on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has hikmah and wisdom which was revealed to us in the Quran, in the surah, that Allah was preparing a better child for them. That child could actually cause them pain, but another child would be better for them. And Allah did that for them subhanahu wa ta'ala. They didn't know. But just the fact that they trusted Allah's judgment subhanahu wa ta'ala, so they, they were able to find beauty in the middle of this chaos completely. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, that's amazing, subhanAllah. I mean, when you hear now with the with the children that are dying, subhanAllah, in, in Gaza right now. And you know, when you're talking about meaning, I love how you mentioned that because you know, you find fulfillment in knowing in that sakina and trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you won't find anywhere else because you mm. can't rely ultimately on anything else. Mm. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within the sharia that the children will be in Jannah, inshallah. Even with our reality as human beings, there's a time frame to mourn. No. Allah doesn't deny our humanity. Mm but there still is a level of responsibility in regards to the grand scheme of things. Mm -hmm. And that what mm -hmm. makes it so beautiful when the time of calamity comes, you know, subhanAllah, when you have to take a step back and really realize, okay, what matters? Okay, Al-Khaliq is the one that gave this child to me. And Allah says, inna lillah wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a beautiful statement when you think about it. You know, what's amazing is uh, when you look at Musa alayhi salam, his life, what a life, like SubhanAllah, like what a life, what, how many twists and turns can a man have in his own life, right? So he starts off, I mean, he wakes up to a reality where he's like in the Nile River. What is a baby thinking <laughs> in a river looking around like, what's happening here? In the middle of strangers. Right? In the middle of strangers in the Nile River. And then how does his life end? He's prohibited from entering into Jerusalem. SubhanAllah. Despite being Kalimullah. And he, you know, the one Allah spoke to directly. And so he dies. Uh, right? He's, he's, he's buried just no, in the wilderness, no. right? In, in a random uh, desert, right under a particular red dune the Prophet mentions. Like, what a, like, it's always like 
this complete submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether, whether you like it or not, right? You have to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But mm-hmm. with that being said, you know, when the Prophet Sallallahu mentions that we have more right to ask, uh, you know, the way Ibrahim Alayhi asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give him a sign mm-hmm. uh, for ziyadah to the iman, for the increase in faith. No. That the prophets before, there is this constant growth. Of course, Ibrahim did not go from a place of having no faith to having faith. No, it was increasing his yaqeen, increasing his certainty with the faith that was already there. With Musa alayhi salam, this whole thing with Al-Khadr happens later in his life. No. This is after he's seen the snake. This is after he's seen the sign in his hands. This is after he's seen, you know, the, the, the sea split and, and take away this vicious tyrant. He's seen it all, right? No. And still, despite having seen it all, Qadar requires just a level of taslim. It recovers. It requires a level of just submission. Like I just don't know, you know. So I still can't. Even at that point in his life, he's still growing, right? And and of course he's at a level of infallibility as a prophet of Allah before that. But he's still growing, Subhanallah. Even in those moments and you know, appreciation of Allah's qadr. You know, Sheikh Subhanallah. Adding to this uh, this issue is that look, when Musa alayhi salam, of course he when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala brought him first to the prophethood. It's not like uh, uh, yani every Nabi has his own way was introduced to the mission, right? Musa alayhi salam came with this huge shock, obviously. He sees a fire in the desert, so he goes to check it out and he wants to see some uh, uh, guidance there and so on. Allah gave him divine guidance. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him to, uh, first of all, when, when he started hearing the, 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 the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking to him, he ran away and Allah says, Irja. Come back, don't be afraid. That my messages are not, shouldn't be scared like this. So he came back and he started speaking to his Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah is testing him. He says, look, what do you have in your hand? He saw the staff. He said, that's my staff. Okay, well, put your hand there and see what can, what's going to come out of it. Allah gave him uh, the proof and the evidence and the ultimate knowledge that, um, that look, uh, you have miracles. You have power in your hand right now. But still, though, he never stopped desiring to know more. So the moment, the moment he thought he had all the knowledge he needed and he realized now suddenly, no, there's someone who knows more than you. Yeah. Okay, now that gives me a, a, a moment of, okay, of probably as a human being, natural human being, give me an anxiety. Because now I don't, know every, I don't know everything anymore. Suddenly right now I need to know more. So he goes to that Al-Khadr and he demands, I want to learn from you. And Al-Khadr told him like, look, what I, what I know, is, it's not going to be beneficial to you. You have your, your, your thing to do, I have my thing to do. He goes, no, I want to learn from you. And he tried, and I don't want to say he failed in that, that actually the three, the three terms, but at least we learned, we learned a huge lesson that right. subhanAllah, um, no matter how knowledgeable you are, right. we will always desire to know more. We I mean, always the desire- The Prophet Sallallahu wished he was more patient. Absolutely. And he even said, I just because we would have got even more. We right? would learn, we would have learned <laughs> more as well too. Yeah. So we always desire to learn more because we think that that knowledge is going to give us that certainty, the ultimate certainty that will give us, at, will put us at ease. But still, even Anbiya, they wanted to learn more. And even the story of, of Maryam, when she was given birth to Isa alayhi salam, قالت, I wish I was, I was, I was never there. This never happened to me. Even though she's already been given the divine knowledge that you are going to be carrying a baby. And she did without being touched by a man. Mm-hmm. So this is miraculous. So all of this, but still we're human beings. That element of knowing more, put us at ease, and I think it is tied to Al-Qadr, because I wish I know what my Qadr is. Mm-hmm. And if Allah has given you all the answers already, then you would be living in Jannah, not here. Mm-hmm. Sheikh, you got any 30 second last words? You... This is a beautiful statement, Al-Qaidu fi al-Qadri ka nadri fi shams. No, no. Right, the one that keeps looking at the Qadr is like the one that looks at the sun. You cannot fully understand it and it could even be dangerous to you. So it's just, I had that taslim just submitting no. to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala via. And so uh, it's interesting because you, you keep talking about knowledge of the future. If Maryam knew that her name would be in Quran, mm. a chapter named after her and the mm. legend that would come after in those moments, mm. it would have certainly made it a lot easier to go through that. So when she says, I wish I was forgotten. <laughs> you mentioned Maryam. There's a whole chapter. Actually, never be forgotten. 
Subhanallah. Amazing. Allah. So knowing the future would definitely make it easier, but alhamdulillah, we, we know the one who knows the past, the present, and the future, and we trust him. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those people. Barakallahu feekum. May Allah make us amongst those people who submit themselves. Jazakallah khair, Shaykh, for being with us uh, and provoking, of course, so much insight. Shaykh Abdullah, as always, Jazakallah khair. Everyone, we will see you all tomorrow, inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.